Let's look at friction today. I have this book sitting on the table. How much friction is acting on this book? Because the book is not sliding and does not have a tendency to slide, there is no friction acting on the book. But now, I'm going to pull on the book with two newtons. The book stays at rest, but now it has a tendency to slide to the right. What do you think friction is now? One of the answers I often get from my students is more than two newtons. Let's see, if I pull with two newtons while friction is more than two, this means that there is a net force going back that way and the book must be accelerating that way. Do you think this can be right? No, the book is certainly not accelerating. This means the friction must be exactly 2 newtons to cancel with my pole. Now, I'm going to increase the pulling force from 2 newtons to 4 newtons. The book still does not move. How much do you think friction is now? four newtons, so they can cancel my pull exactly. Now I'm going to increase my pulling force until the book begins to slide. Please pay attention to the scales reading, especially the moment the book begins to slide. Did you notice that the force dropped suddenly when the book began to move? Let me play this part again in slow motion. Now let's plot a friction versus my pulling force graph. When there was no pulling force, the friction was zero. So both pulling force and friction are zero. When I pulled with two newtons, friction was also two newtons. And then I increased my pull to four newtons, friction was also four newtons. So the graph went like this, and I kept on increasing my pull until it reached about 7.6 newtons. And then the box began to slide. At that moment, friction suddenly drops to about 6.6 .6 newtons. And that's, those are newtons. Newtons. It turns out that if I kept on increasing my pull past 7.6 newtons, the book will just accelerate while the friction would stay at 6.6 .6 newtons. So the graph will look like this. This part is before sliding. We call this friction static friction. This part is when the box is sliding, so we call this friction kinetic friction. Notice that we have a peak right here. This value here is called the maximum static friction. So you can see that the static friction can be various amounts. However, the kinetic friction is the same no matter how hard we pull. This means uh, no matter how fast the book slides or accelerates, the kinetic friction will be the same amount. Experiments show that this maximum possible static friction and the kinetic friction are proportional to the normal force between the two contact surfaces. It makes sense 
that the harder the two surfaces are pressed against each other, the stronger this friction force. It makes sense that the harder the two surfaces are pressed against each other, the stronger these friction forces. Because these friction forces are proportional to the normal force, we can make them equal to the friction, the maximum static friction. We can make it equal to a constant mu s times the normal force. And the kinetic friction would be the thing mu k, a constant mu k times the normal force, where the mu s is called the coefficient of static friction. And the mu k is called, of course, the coefficient of uh, kinetic friction. It's mu, you write it kind of like a lowercase u, just with a long tail in the front. It's a Greek letter, mu. So the amount of uh, kinetic friction depends on this mu k and the normal force. What do you think mu k depends on? Both of these coefficients of friction depend on the texture of the contact surfaces. For example, rubber tires on dry concrete road has a mu s of about 1 and a mu k about 0.8. For rubber tires on snow, mu s is about 0.3 and mu k is about 0.2. See, Mu s is usually higher than mu k because the maximum possible static friction is usually higher than the kinetic friction. And the smaller the mu, the more slippery the contact surface is. Let's do a sample problem now. A 5 kilogram box sits on a table. The contact surface has a mu s of 0.4 and a mu k of 0.3. Find the acceleration of the box if the pushing force on the box is A, 16 newtons, B, 24 newtons. When we follow the problem solving procedures, we first have to identify the direction of acceleration. But in this problem, the first thing we'll have to do is to see whether the box is going to slide or not, to see whether our pushing force is enough to make the box slide. To judge whether the box is going to begin to slide, we have to see if our pushing force can overcome that maximum static friction. So the first thing is uh, we have to find that maximum static friction. And the equation is uh, mu s times the normal force. Mu s, of course, is 0.4, the normal force. Now, we can draw the force diagram to figure out the normal force. Or, in this case situation, we can see that the pushing force is horizontal. There is no slanted force, there is no forces pulling the box up or pushing it down. So. Nothing is complicating the forces in the vertical direction. The table only experiences the weight of the box, which is 50 newtons. So the normal force between the box and the table would be 50 newtons. The table experiences the normal weight of the box. So this will give us a maximum friction of 20 newtons. Now for part A, the 16 newtons is less than 20. That is not enough to make the box to begin moving, so the box is going to stay at rest. Which means uh, the acceleration will be zero. Now I did not ask you to find the friction, but 
if you have to find the friction since you push with 16 newtons and there's no acceleration, the net force has to be zero. That means uh, your pushing force must be canceled by the friction exactly. So the friction must be 16 newtons, not 20. Because the 20 is the maximum possible static friction. The real static friction can be less than 20. Now for part B, 24 newtons is bigger than 20. That means that's enough to overcome the maximum static friction. The box is going to slide. If it's sliding, that means we don't have static friction. We have kinetic friction. So we have to find the kinetic friction, which is uh, mu k times the normal force. Mu k is 0.3, and again, the normal force is still the same 50. So this is uh, 15 newtons. Now if I want to find the acceleration of the box, the acceleration direction goes to the left. Since it's a horizontal acceleration, I just need to draw the forces that's in the horizontal direction. So mg is vertical. I don't have to draw it. The normal force is also vertical. So they don't contribute to this horizontal acceleration. Besides, we already know the mg and normal force, they cancel. And what's left from this horizontal surface is friction. Friction is horizontal, and friction goes back that way. So friction is a horizontal force. The box is also touching the pushing force. The pushing force, that is uh, 24. Oops. The pushing force is 24. And the friction, the kinetic friction is always the same. So this is uh, 15. No matter how hard you push, if it's sliding, the kinetic friction will be the same value. So to write the net force equals to ma, the bigger side minus the smaller side gives you the net force. 24 minus 15 equals to m is 5 times the acceleration. So this is 9 equals to 5a. The acceleration would be 1.8 meters per second square, and that goes to the left.